Even if you usually don't come out, actually come out physically, yes, physically to church on Sundays, what we call the Lord's Day, come out this weekend. Come out this weekend because it's a special Lord's Day, July 4th, Lord's Day. Come out because we prepared food for you and we need people to eat it. Come out because we have the Lord's Supper this Lord's Day. And even if you don't usually come out, I would encourage you to come and join your church family once a month at least when we take the Lord's Supper together. Come and represent and be a part of your church family feasting together before the Lord. All right, we're moving on today in the series on the core values of the house. We laid the foundation for, that, for those core values yesterday with the gospel that we are representing and presenting here at our church. Now, the gospel itself is pretty, a lot of the parts of it, as I spelled it out, is very similar to most of you, but there are certain emphases in there that I brought out for you that is very often neglected in most churches, and one, of course, was that it's not simply an invitation, but a command. You obey the gospel. And another aspect was that this is the Trinitarian love, that, that God, the love that God has had within himself from forever to forever is given to us to enjoy with him and with each other and share with the world. We saw that in John chapter 17, verse 23. Now, I want to go into our church's motto slash vision statement, and that is worship oneness witness worship oneness witness when you walk into our church what you will find on the wall you will almost be just smacked over the head with it as you enter into the main doors is this sign on the wall yes it is permanently on the wall the values that beat at the heart of the house worship oneness witness today i want to explain that to you Especially if you are new to our church, you may be wondering what that is really about. Well, that is what our church is about. Let me explain. Jesus, before he goes to the cross, facing the cross, prays these words for his disciples. A whole chapter is devoted to it, but like I said yesterday, much, most of it is, is distilled if you look at this one verse. Read with me. Look for worship, oneness, witness. It's all there. I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfectly one, that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. You see there this loving connection with God. The same love that the Son of God enjoys with the Father. You in me, Jesus says. That love relationship with God, right? And then with one another, that we may become perfectly one, sharing that same love, that we might know God, be included in that love that is from forever to forever, and that we might share that love with the watching world that the world may know. All right, if we want to divide it up like this, we can see it under the theme of oneness. If you want to bring worship, oneness, witness together under one word, it is oneness. Oneness with God. Oneness with one another. Oneness reaching out. Worship, oneness, witness. We are to be a church that knows how to worship right, that doesn't compromise the word of God, that stands firm on the word of God and offers the kind of worship that God prescribes. Worship is something we offer to God. Most of us, we evaluate how good a worship service was by how you feel after the worship service. Even though your, your heart's response is a decent gauge as to how you worshiped. Make no mistake, don't get the cart before the horse. That doesn't, if you're feeling good, does not determine whether or not it was a good worship service. What determines whether or not it was a good worship service is whether God accepted it or not. And to ensure that, 
to make sure that God is getting what he wants, we need to offer God the kind of worship that he prescribes. So we try to get that right. But we are not just a, a dot all your I's and cross all your T's church. It is not strictly just as long as we get worship right, we did it. We did it. We did what God has called us to do. No. No. We are, also, we are, we are to treasure the truth, but we are also to value love. Value and prioritize love. In fact, digest truth, not compromise it, digest truth in the loving arms of love. We are to emphasize oneness. We are to serve one another. We are to sacrifice each for each other. We are to be Jesus' loving arms outstretched that embraces his bride, the church. We are to be a church that is all about love, all about oneness but also not only about love, not only about oneness, not love as, at the expense of worship, at the expense of compromising truth, not love so, so that the church, is, church grows so inward and all we care about is ourselves. As long as we love one another, we've done it, we've done it. No. We are also called to be a church that witnesses that reaches out, that is others focused, that is not satisfied with just having Jesus by ourselves. He's too good for that. I'm reminded of the passage where Jesus said, where God says to Jesus, Jesus, you are too good to be given only the, to the people of Israel. I will make you a light for all the Gentiles. You know why the gospel needs to go out to the ends of the earth? Because Jesus' goodness is too awesome to be kept to ourselves. The news is just too good to be just treasured in a corner. So, that is our calling. We together want to sacrifice, want to strive to paint the bigger picture of the body of Jesus Christ. Not just worship, not just oneness, not just witness, but the whole shebang. We want it all. Call us greedy if you want. But this is the commission that Jesus has given us. This is the big picture that Jesus paints. And for this picture, the apostles died, the martyrs died, and we give our lives. It is truly something worth living for and worth dying for. The very pleasure of God is contained in this vision. So let's share it together. Worship, oneness, witness. And as, the, as we do this, the hope is the world will say, wow, God truly is among you. And join us in singing his praise. Let's do that right now. I need you.
Lord, we see your vision for your church. We see the beauty of your bride. She is stunning. And we feel so inadequate to the task. We are so in need of you. The key, the key, the key is your strength, your power, your vision, your endurance, the grace you pour out through your Holy Spirit. Thank you for granting him to us. Jesus, in your matchless, beautiful name we pray. Abba, Father, be pleased with the prayer that we pray today. Amen.